Hey, you're listening to No Limits, episode 28. I'm talking like a news broadcaster. It's me, Taylor, and I'm joined by my co-host, Brianna, and you're listening to No Limits, a PlayStation podcast, episode 28. And The Last of Us TV show has released, and a lot of other things that I just forgot right now, and unionization and layoffs, but it's all right, because I'm going to cue the intro starting now. Bye. <laughs> oh my God, I did the wrong intro. We're keeping it. Woohoo! Brie, I clicked the wrong intro. Do you remember when I was like, hey, <laughs> make sure you know where the intro is last I week, two weeks do. ago? You know, I, probably... I you have you have to know where it is because I have done that as well. And it was very embarrassing. I'm not gonna cut it out. We're keeping it. Oh yeah, we kept it last time too. So Good. they're used to it at this point. Okay. So. See, like the the color palette for our intro looks very similar to one of the other intros we have here on our melon interface for recording and doing our intros so that's my fault all right brie note it's i'm noting its position now all right quadrant four all right that's, that's what are you gonna do if it moves what am i gonna do i'm gonna yeah. go with this show what's do. so what's so funny to me is that kevin is like i don't know how you guys always do this but like look at the two intros he has to click on they're very obvious what they are right right it's true so there you go. We're oppressed is what we're trying to say by yeah, Kevin. Yeah, exactly. And by Kevin. You know, now, with that out of the way, remember, you can find the show, the video version of No Limits, over on YouTube.com slash Save the Game Media every Tuesday. And while you're over there, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you'd rather listen to audio, we are on all your favorite podcast services and would love it if you could give us a review. It helps us grow and we'd love any feedback. If you want to support us and get early access to all Save the Game Media content, head over to patreon.com slash Save the Game Media and choose the tier that's right for you. Just like our current patrons, Bucky Blue, Hopple, Apakatom, Amon, Fabulous Brianna, Brianna's mom, Brianna's brother, Brianna's wife, Anna Hudak, Nikolai at Night, Cypher Primus, Brendan Myers, Marcus O'Neill, Lillian, Mimi J, The Snack Network, and Dave Hotright. Again, please go over to patreon.com slash Save the Game Media to check it out. And please also check us out at over on youtube.com slash save the game media and interact with us over on discord links in the show notes and please also check us out because we're both single uh <laughs> actually um you know i just ordered i just ordered a plushie so kind of take i'm just kidding oh plushie not even a blow up doll no just like a small plushie like you know it's about as big as my hand no, it's just gonna no no it's not weird it's just gonna go on you're my getting, shoulder it's getting worse it's just gonna I go on my shoulder saying. just kind of like sit there with, either sew it on top like a, sh a shirt every time i see on, i see okay so it's it a companion a, not <laughs> yeah i saw someone and i want to be this person who's trained their their name is like rachel and coon on youtube i think and they trained their cats to sit in their bike basket while they're biking Oh, there's another, um, so there's, uh, what's his name? Jin that he cooks. Wait, on no, I, I misnamed him. That's him. Yeah. So there's Jin and he does cooking and then he's married to somebody named Rachel. Yep. That's that. um, I said, June. I said, who'd I say? June. I don't know what you said Moon. to be honest I mean, I said with you. Kuhn. I don't know why I thought his name was. I don't know. My, my brain, like, like white. A noise, Japanese like, male and an American woman like, are a couple and they have cats who are really impressive. That's the. And they live in one. Japan. They live in and Japan. he makes really delicious looking food. And he makes and really they, delicious food. We also have a Patreon. And he and he, he also has a we also have a really. Patreon. And they have a Patreon. We also have you a should Patreon. subscribe to yeah. our Patreon. And ours. Everybody's Patreon. Nope, just ours. If you <gasps> subscribe to their Patreon, I will IP block you from listening to this podcast. No, I won't. Don't take that as a threat. I'm not actually saying that. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> I don't even know how to do that, so. Oh, you know, you just, um, you ever played the game, oh, I don't know, Hack GU, the recode or something? Were you just like, I don't know. That's the name of a JRPG. I'm not sure if you actually do like faux hacking. Mm. There are some PC games on Steam where you actually like do some coding and it's like a coding game, but it's not actually coding, but it's using, using like coding logic. You solve puzzles like as if you're imitating a coder. 
we had that in um so my team the company is proper panda that's the name of the company but when i uh, my senior project the game that we published um had hacking in it because you had to hack the border walls and so you just typed really fast country mexico mm -hmm. what about canada um well it was during a particular time where somebody was trying to build a wall <laughs> Oh, you're talking about the Great Wall of China, of course. Yeah, no, yeah, of course. That's exactly what I was talking about. So, yeah, we were talking about hacking the wall and taking down the wall. Hmm. But we weren't allowed to say anything specific. Have you, that tried, was hacking the, have you the uh, tried hacking the pigeons? I have not. Um, I do very much. I am very much on the same page here where it's like the birds can't be real. Have you seen them? There's no way. Oh, my God. And they're bipedal? And feathered. I know. That's what I'm saying. You can't, yeah. you can't even tell me that birds are real. I can't. Right. Even Guys, if it. birds are real. If birds are real. If birds How are real. How can mirrors gonna... be real? Right. right. <laughs> My sister's going to get so out of shape. <laughs> what? Does your sister believe <laughs> No, she gets real? mad. No, you know that like the Jaden Smith tweet from forever ago that's like, how can be how can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real, <laughs> or something like uh, what that? What you said I, that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things to ask my sister because she gets so mad because she doesn't know how to answer the question. <laughs> She's like, uh, "But they are real," and I'm like, "But they're not." <laughs> she gets so confused. I love it so much. It's one of the things that makes me laugh the most. The other thing she doesn't like is if you ask her about like if a tree falls in in the woods and there's no one there to hear it does it make a noise she gets so mad does your sister need a primer on you know i don't know science yeah maybe but oh man yeah she does not like being asked those kinds of questions she gets so mad at me she's like brianna you know that's the and i don't like being asked that and stuff like that and she just gets it's really funny you know what i should start you know what I should ask her? I heard this on the PSVG pod the other day. I should ask her to explain to me why is space black? Oh, you should ask her. She's in the Discord. <laughs> I'll ping her and ask her. Oh, okay. If she listens oh, to this man. podcast. You know, something, something, absence of light has something to do with it. Yeah. Oh, my Perhaps. God. Okay, hold on. Where is she? Okay. <laughs> You're gonna ask her right now. <laughs> Reason. All right. I'm gonna ask her about mirrors. <laughs> All right. So, uh, with that out of the way, while Bree's asking her sister about uh, mirrors, I'm gonna ask Bree. Bree, what have you been playing recently? Um. Well, Monster Hunter just released two days ago. Well, Which Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Rise. Yeah, Rise. That's what I'm talking about. And it's obviously been out on Switch forever, like literally forever. One of the best performing 30 FPS Switch games I've ever seen, for the record. Mm -hmm it's on pc but PC's let better. me tell you it is a switch game <laughs> oh shit are the textures horrible the textures are so bad but it is still monster hunter it does look good it just is like very obviously a switch game um and it doesn't feel like what's so i feel like if i were to pull up monster hunter world i think that the graphics would be better for that game um and monster hunter world is a lot older then rise you um, wow so yeah is, is the frames are the frames at least 60 i don't know i don't think so if i had to guess but i don't actually know sure. so but yeah it's it's regardless of it not looking great um the play it i'm having fun i'm having Good. a lot of fun um i love monster hunter getting into that loop of like okay i gotta you know, like I gotta like get my equipment ready. I have to like you have to eat like a meal. The meal in this one is like you get little dongos, they're very cute. Um, you get a little meal prepped by the little chefs, and right. then you go on the hunt and you have to like track the monster, and right. they have like this new mechanic where you have like a it's called a kahoot, where there's like an owl that hangs out with you that will like tell you where the monsters are, kind of. Um I named mine Hootington. 
That's nice. What Thank what you. weapon are you using? Um, I switch a lot. Um, okay. the default that they gave me was the long sword. Um, mm -hmm. I switched pretty soon. Um, I do like the long sword. Um, I switched to the great sword, I believe it's called. Um, and then I'm going to try out the glaive in this game see, and see how I the glaive the feels. Glaive. When I played it, Monster Hunter Rise for a few months, I wasn't mm -hmm. a fan of it. And then I traded in the game, which I resent a bit when I was on Switch. Mm. I think I would have liked a sword or the hunter's horn more, but I never tried them. Ooh, I the the so the glaive and the horn are very so the glaive is diff it, they're both difficult but in different ways. So like the insect glaive is hard to kind of get used to that movement because you're not running around. You're up in the air and you're you have to like air, basically yeah. projectile yourself towards the monster and you're like doing a lot of spinning stuff. Um, until you get used to the, the glaive, it's kind of hard to get that movement down, especially when you're like trying to use your insect as well. Um, your kinsect, so, I think it's called, right? Mm -hmm. You're yeah. right. You have to get different colors and different colors do different things. And da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Um, and then the other one is the hunting horn, but you have to attack while playing a song. So you have to only use specific attacks because that's what makes the notes. And so that one can also be difficult because you can mess up the combos and then you miss out on the buff. So the hunting horn is more like if you're hunting in a party. Um, so you're like buffing your mem like fellow members and stuff. So. Gotcha. Well, I hunt solo. I don't do it on a multiplayer. I should though. You should. Absolutely. Right. That's where Monster Hunter really right. like thrives. Is, is Rise when coming you're going to PlayStation and Xbox? Or was it is, right? It, that that's what it just launched on two okay. days ago. Yeah, I'm that out of touch, so. guys. Story is it cross play? <clears throat> it is not. Oh which no. is why I no. got the pass that shall not be named. What? Why? Season pass? Yeah, I got the game pass. So that I could play it for ten dollars. Oh, you got game of... pass. Did you pay the one dollar for a month? No, nah. I paid. I just paid like the nine ninety nine for PC. I don't know. It didn't make me okay. offer. I have had Game Pass before, so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I got the PC Game Pass, so that way I could play because it is cross play, but only if you're playing PC Game Pass. If you're paying like playing on Steam, you can't play with Xbox people. But anyways, all the people oh. that we know, like at the Discord, are playing it through Xbox because obviously it's already included in Game Pass. Right. And... Is anybody playing besides Kyle? Um, Kyle and Ethan and Tom. Oh, okay. Oh, from maybe what I'll I get know. on this. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I, my, I don't know when my PC is coming up to my where I move because I don't think I think I'm bringing my PS5 onto the airplane. I don't think my PSC is coming onto the airplane. I would get like the I can't remember what it's called, but there's a thing that you can expand inside of the PC. Yeah. To protect the graphics card. I would I'll get figure that. it out. It's rough. Mm hmm. What have you been playing? What are you up to? So I me. I've been playing, oddly enough, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare's campaign. Hmm. Which I heard very good things about. And I wanted to play some COD campaigns up to get in the mood because I was hearing good things about MW2 a few months ago. So I picked up Infinite Warfare plus Modern Warfare Remastered double pack on the on ps4 playing back and pat on ps5 and got both of them combined for like 24 dollars. so i'm like nice so i started with infinite warfare i heard again i heard really good things about the campaign so far i think it's decent i think the story is obnoxiously boring <laughs> but the gameplay is and the set pieces are really fun so as a whole experience it's a little bit middling i thought cod was known for its stories in its campaigns but this one i think is so like cookie cutter uh on the upside there are it's a futuristic game so it's like titanfall 2-esque mm. there's zero gravity running there's piloting ships there's androids there's i hopefully will pilot a mech at some point but there's a lot of futuristic tech in it that you can toy around with which is nice you can hack robots and make them self-destruct so that's cool that sounds pretty cool yeah so it's decent so far. I'll, I'll, I'll beat it. And then I'll go to Modern Warfare mm -hmm. Remastered. And after that, the plan is to go for Call of Duty, play Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, then play Modern Warfare 2019, and then Modern Warfare 2 that came out this past November. Okay. 
but I'll probably play a Plague Tale someone in, somewhere in there when I resume my PS yeah, Plus. Yeah, nobody tell Kevin. I know he listens to this. Kevin, pretend you don't listen to this. Nobody tell Kevin, but I'm probably going to play a Plague Tale at some point soon. Ooh. There's a lot of stuff coming up, but there's like some gaps as well, like particularly in April. I personally don't have anything on my radar currently in April. So, um, yeah, I don't know. There's a couple things that I want to try and catch up on. Um, I want to try and catch up on like the Horizon franchise so that I can play the DLC and stuff. Um, but I have to play through all of Horizon Zero Dawn and the DLC and then Horizon Forbidden West so that I can get to the DLC. So it's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. Well, yeah. best of luck. Thank you. Oh, I have to say, I don't know how many games I'm going to be playing for these next few months because anime season this. <laughs> uh -oh. Winter 2023 is so insane. There's so many shows right now. I'm currently at about 30 shows that I'm watching every week. I'm probably going to drop a few to try and cut down on that. But yeah, 30 episodes a week, essentially. No kidding. All right. Yeah. Anime's popping off. <laughs> Anime May. Mm -hmm. Except for January, but yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I don't watch much anime. I should maybe... I want to watch more Studio Ghibli. Mm, solid choice. It's all spirited away, and that's also far. I want to see Hal's Moving Castle, is it called? Mm -hmm. yes. That's such a good show. I love it so much. And then I want to watch Ponyo. <sighs> Ponyo is so good. My little sister loves Ponyo. Or is it Ponyo? It's Ponyo. Ponyo. Mm -hmm. Ponyo. Yep. Ponyo, Yo -yo. Ponyo. Little fishy right. in the sea. Anyway. Uh, um, I guess I guess we'll get into the news, guys, for this week. We have a lot of stories here. Uh, yep. So buckle up and fasten your seatbelts. You know, when people say buckle up and fasten your seatbelts, isn't that redundant? I, I don't even know what fasten would mean because doesn't fasten usually mean like tying? No, I think I don't know because I feel like buckling up just means clicking the seatbelt into place, but then fastening. Yeah, can the seatbelt buckle. Yeah. Oh, you're right because those seatbelts used to like tighten manually. They still do to an extent. If you if you mine doesn't. Pull, <laughs> you pull on your shoulder when you're in a car. If you have a three point oh, seatbelt. Oh God, my my dad's girlfriend's Jeep hates me it literally locks every time i get into the car jeeps suck i'm gonna say it right now they're not oh, well-made vehicles they're large they got horrible gas mileage the only way i would ever think about getting a sheep is if i a sheep a jeep or a sheep <laughs> please get if, a sheep <laughs> if i exclusively drove on dirt roads maybe i'd get a wrangler mm. maybe mm, okay well they are they just drive around the city in, in California, and my dad and his girlfriend Using both have Jeeps. Jeep as a yep. city car? Mm -hmm. What is it, a Wrangler or a Cherokee? Mm -hmm. Wrangler's smaller, but they're still a large vehicle. Well, I think my there's some dad Jeep has the smaller there. one, and my dad's girlfriend has the bigger one. I don't know. All right. They're both Jeep like the square Jeeps. You heard it here right. first. Yeah, there's Wranglers usually. All right. All right. All right, guys. So. I guess let me address the moderately sized elephant in the room. The Last of Us episode one of the TV show came out last week. And we're going to save our mini review of that for the end of the show. But we yeah. do have a Last of Us related story to hit off number one on today's list of news. And that is The Last of Us has become HBO's second largest debut after House of the Dragon since 2010 with 4.7 million viewers. So sorry, The Last of Us TV show has 4.7 million viewers, and that's the largest, second largest debut since 2010 after House of the Dragon. So House of the Dragon had nearly 10 million viewers at its debut. So while The Last of Us TV show has less than half, that just gives you, and it's and it's still second on that viewer list since 13 years ago, that gives you an idea of how major the Game of Thrones franchise George R. R. Martin brings to the table in terms of uh, brand power but yeah but i think that's crazy because it's like the last of us is just like a video game franchise you know what i mean so it feels like not a lot of people would know about it well you could say you know the game of thrones what, what was the what was the f book series that game of thrones is based on again um a song of ice and fire 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Were those books wildly popular before the show came out? Uh, yes. All right. You know what? Okay. Fine. <laughs> what? Don't ask Nothing. questions if you don't want the answers, Taylor. Okay, I'm not asking questions anymore. <laughs> the, the Last, Last of Us, Us is, is a really wildly popular game. I'm not arguing it that is, point. Yeah. It's but just... it's still not as popular as books. It's... I think games might make more like the games industry i think is making the most out of all of the industries right now right i'm just talking about in terms of public reach yeah that's true well with the youth obviously books aren't doing anything with the youth <laughs> yeah no 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 kid reads books anymore guys sorry i do you're not a kid i know yeah i knew it i don't read books, I'm trying to read books. <laughs> it like it was a conspiracy i knew you weren't a kid brianna <laughs> i knew it uh, the Last of Us numbers, show numbers, nearly doubled Euphoria season twos, and HBO claims Sunday night viewers from the first episode of the Last of Us TV show represent twenty to forty percent of the gross amount of viewers per episode. So I think that what that means is of all the people who will end up watching each episode, twenty to forty percent of that number comes from the first night that the show is available. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. It's so like how like... a movie makes most of its money in the first weekend of the box office. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, actually, okay, I guess yeah. this isn't the majority, but it makes a large chunk of its money during the first weekend or week on, on the market. Yeah. So the other thing that I'm curious about is that like in my household watching it, we had four people watching it, including myself. It's more than three. Yeah, that is more than three. You are so – I'm so proud of you, Taylor. Wait, You're really who's good at this. It? You, your dad, GF. Mm -hmm. Who's the fourth person? Um, My dad's friend. Um, oh, God, friends. So. Who needs them? Yeah. Well, we Luna. invited him over. We are inviting him over again tonight to watch episode two. You guys so. going to have some soda pops? Um, My dad is on a no soda pop thing right now, so probably not. Oh. Because I'm too lazy to buy soda. Some pizza pies. <laughs> Mm, probably not. That's Friday nights. We only have like crazy no. stuff on Friday nights. Some chicken tendies. What are we Chalky having milk. tonight? We're having lasagna tonight. Dino nuggies. I love dino nuggies. Dino I nuggies. am a true believer in dino nuggies. They're better than all nuggies. You will never convince me otherwise. And you can get some vegetarian. For the record, this made me think that I enjoy like morning star vegetarian chicken patties i actually think the mm -hmm. imitation chicken is good i want to make for mm -hmm. kevin vegan friendly kevin we can get you you know vegan dino nuggies and we can all eat dino nuggies together i would love that i love dino nuggies so much With we should texture. also make mac and cheese while we're at it and can we make the shaped mac and cheese I know it doesn't mac taste. I know it doesn't taste as good as regular mac and cheese, like the regular craft. But the shaped craft mac and cheese is just magical, especially oh, okay. if you're I having dino you meant, nuggies. I thought for some reason I thought you meant like getting a stencil like you would for cookies and like stamping out mac <laughs> and cheese. And I'm like, what in the world? No, no, no. Like the actual the ones that have like the weird yeah, shape, like yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get vegan ketchup for the there. chicken nuggets. All ketchup's vegan. That is the joke. Well, is all ketchup vegan? There has to be some know. ketchup somewhere that has like some stupid mayo. Well, mayo and ketchup is Russian dressing, so. Mm. It's actually called fry sauce. Russian dressing is not fry sauce. It's called fry sauce. Look it up. I'm so serious. No, it's it's, Russian it's dressing. a Midwestern thing. <laughs> fry Midwest sauce. doesn't exist. Uh, that's true, but also fry sauce, ketchup is and Utah mayo. Is Utah considered the Midwest? It's considered the uh, Southwest, isn't it? No, it's considered Midwest. What? No, it isn't. I'll die on that hill. There's no hill. <laughs> in Utah, You're just there is standing no hill. in the middle there, of nothing. In Utah, there are some plateaus and buttes, right? I, I don't know, dude. You know I don't go outside. <laughs> There's mountains. I don't know. Oh, my God. You're supposed to know this. <laughs> know. There's mountains, and there's the salt flats, and snow. Sweat. But Sweat also plants. desert. And does it somehow? <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, last, <laughs> last of Us is doing pretty well so far. Yes, we will talk about it. We're going to do a little podcast within a podcast at the end where we talk about episode the episode of the week for the next eight weeks or whatever. 
Um, so I'm very excited about that. So we can talk about that later. But it was so good. That's all I'll say. Yep. 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 Next one. Okay. Or do you have anything else to say nope. besides it did good? It it did. It got a participation award. That's all I wanted to say. It did done good. You did good, kid. Yep. Here's oh, I will say, I want to like shout out. Like there is a podcast that Troy Baker is hosting. Um with neil Druckmann and the director whose name i can never remember um they're like it's a podcast with the three of them and they talked about like the episode the first episode and they're doing it every week but it gave a lot of context to the episode that like i would not have known otherwise even as somebody that's played the game so highly recommend that podcast so anyways. troy baker promote his nfts no oh man i was really looking forward to that i know i wasn't <laughs> It's okay. Full, <laughs> the Last of Us co-director calls for unionization after not receiving HBO credit. Um, so Bruce Strawley, co-director of The Last of Us with Neil Druckmann in 2013, left Naughty Dog after Uncharted 4 launched in 2016. Um, he directed Uncharted 4. Strawley said the lack of credit in episode one for The Last of Us made him think more about workers' rights in gaming. <laughs> it's rights in gaming. <laughs> Um, it's an argument for unionization that someone who was part of the co-creation of the world and those characters. Are you trying to block me so I can't read? <laughs> it's an argument for unionization that someone who is part of the co-creation of that world and those characters isn't getting a credit for credit or nickel for the work that they put in. He said, maybe we need unions in the video game industry to be able to protect creators. Druckmann is distinctly credited in the opening sequence of the show as the writer of The Last of Us. Seven Naughty Dog devs were also credited for consultation. Um, Druckmann is also an executive producer on the show. Strolly returned to gaming with a new studio last year called Wildflower Interactive and describes his relationship with Naughty Dog as, quote, strained. Crediting in the video game industry is an ongoing point of contention, unlike in Hollywood, where their unions lead to strict crediting rules and practices. This comes from Andy Robinson at VGC. Um, this is consistent with the information that, like, like the brief interactions that I've had with the industry on, like, my end, just being, like, a student and, like, going to um, GDC and stuff like that, is that oh, there's a lot of issues with crediting where people will do work on the game, but by the time the game comes out, they're no longer on the team. And so, like, depending, sometimes the name will get removed from the credit and stuff like that. So this is a pretty prevalent um, issue in the industry. I think it's a little, um, I don't say like silly, but it seems like weird that like a co-director is bringing this up because he's a high end person, which means he would have more power to leverage something like this and help with the unionization. So it's, I don't know, it kind of like is weird to me or feels weird that he like, now that he's being now that he's suffering now he's interested in it i don't know maybe he was interested in it before but regardless i do think it's um i think the video games industry and i've said this again and i'll probably like i've said this before and i'm probably gonna say it again the industry needs to unionize i don't know what that looks like but just for terms of le the longevity of like the industry and stuff like that i think that it really needs to unionize so that's how i feel about it what about you taylor Sorry, I was just writing something down. Um, I actually have an, I think maybe an interesting take on this from Bruce. So I do agree that unionization in, in games and unionization overall is a net benefit for workers. Um, even if unions, no union is perfect. You know, I'll just say that right now. And unions don't have the power overall that they once did. Um, earlier in the 20th century of the United States, especially in more blue collar industrial settings, you see it less in white collar professions like video games or engineering or cor more corporate um, office type roles. Um, so I think unionization would definitely help, especially in the realm of, you know, crediting creators. Um, in this specific instance, I'm not sure if Bruce should be credited on the last of us show. And I say that because Bruce 
directed the game, but he didn't write the story, and he didn't have an inf- and he didn't have a stake in the show. Now you can make the argument that due to Bruce Straley's directing of The Last of Us in 2013, that impacted how certain scenes of the writing are portrayed in the video game. I don't know if enough of that is true to warn him being credited in the show. Um, yeah, because so, I mean, the thing is, is like, you could probably argue like a lot of people that were involved with the game should be credited, right? Not just like the couple of people that got credited because the whole team made the game possible. I don't know. Yeah, you can make that argument. I could also see it, again, I could also see it being one one step too far removed from the original game that, you know, there's so, I guess it's also not that much work to credit, like, you know, how does how much work is it to make a slide of all the people who contributed to the game? So I guess maybe after talking about it, it probably would have been a good idea to credit him, but I don't think... I don't think his pushback for not being credited on the show. I don't necessarily know if that's if as much as he's pushing back if that if that quantity is, of it is warranted. Yeah. Um if it yeah, that's that's where I'm coming from on it. But that shouldn't take away from the fact that I think unionization still would help absolutely uh, video games and a lot of other industries to be more common nowadays yeah um, that's what i'm saying yeah. is like i feel like unionization is the way to go but this also feels like a weird point like the person making it like and as well as like why he's making it i don't know it just it's like he's right but also like feels weird i don't know yeah so i wish bruce the best and i hope he gets mm-hmm. Hope he does well, Wildflower Interactive. I just thought mm-hmm. it was a little bit of a bizarre call out. I really hope because Wildflower Interactive, like we we covered that in one of our news stories like months ago. But it sounds like that that studio is going to be pretty awesome and be paving the way for some really good things. So I hope that I wish the best for that studio and for him. What are they making? They haven't said yet. They just announced that they existed. Um, and like, because the thing that we were really talking about is like their core values and stuff, because they were talking about like treating their workers fairly and crunch and a lot of the stuff okay. that's like really bad about the industry. They're like the whole point of Wildflower Interactive was to um, allow their workers to grow in a safe environment kind of thing. It sounds like some fluff five ever heard it. <laughs> I hope they put it into practice. Yeah, I agree. All right, nice. Uh, Unfortunately, (laughs) related to some, you know, our unionization talk, the games industry, games media industry, and tech, the tech sector overall are facing massive layoffs right now. Project X Talk mentioned this earlier in the week on the Microsoft end. We're going to take a more holistic view and look at, you know, all the industries that were in, all the companies that were majorly impacted. And again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just some of the heaviest hitters. So Microsoft laid off 10,000 employees, including some 343, which are employees who are the people who make Halo. Bethesda, the coalition, the coalition makes Gears of War, and Xbox employees were included in that layoff. Riot Game. Now we're going to alternate here between you know big tech companies and games companies. Riot Games lay off 46 of their employees. Which is huge for Riot, by the way. Riot is big, but they're not that big. Oh, I didn't know that. How many, like, well, like, we're talking, like, are they less Mm, than a thousand employees? How many? Yeah, for sure. Employees does Riot have? Um, Oh, you know what? I lied. There's about 4,500, but it depends on where you're talking about because there's like, so there's the riot games that does league. There's like the Valorant team. There is like project L there's a bunch of them. So there's uh 20 plus offices and 4,500 people and project L. I don't know what you're referencing. That's the fighting game. <laughs> They're, that's their fight. Oh their league fighting yeah. Game. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm, you're right. They better include Vi in that anyways. 
random note. Buy is sweet. But yeah, for me, I don't know. For me, Riot Games is like I spend a lot of time playing League of Legends, so I was like forty six. And money. People. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well over a thousand. Moving on. Google's laid <sighs> off 12,000 employees. Its CEO, Sundar uh, Pichai, I hope I pronounced that correctly and copied his name down correctly. The Google CEO, I'll just say, said they hired, quote, for a different economic reality than the one we face today. And so mm -hmm. they've laid off 12,000 employees as a consequence. Um, that sucks. I know. Mm hmm I know someone whose friend was part of the layoffs from Google. I know someone the, who knew the someone. The severance package from Google was circulating on Reddit. And if the severance package I saw is assumed to be real, I hope there aren't people that desperate enough for attention that they would fabricate a public release of a statement for a severance package. Mm -hmm. um, that they're getting at least two and a half months pay on top of like six months health insurance um on top of unemployment so like google and then and they have a the more years of service you have the longer your severance package lasts so and don't quote me on anything i just said that was just i think spot that sounds like a pretty normal from a, severance from an article package. yesterday but it seems like the severance package was at least good so i would hope microsoft's and all these companies are too um Amazon, sorry, Unity Software laid off 284 employees. The people who make the Unity engine and I'm not quite sure what else Unity works on specifically, but they're a huge force in the games Just industry. The engine, I think, I don't think they really do too much else, but the Unity engine is a huge asset to the games industry. So. Right. Um, Giant Bomb and GameSpot, 40 plus employees were laid off. Um, and you Amazon. Know, 18k yeah yeah, would be, yeah. i was gonna say that for last amazon was the heaviest oh, hitter okay. with eighteen thousand employees laid off um and yeah tech tech is getting hit super hard right now so hard. and the businesses cite economic difficulties as the reason for their layoffs and the analysts say companies are quote unquote course correcting after aggressive hiring sprees from during the pandemic i kind of understand that but i also want to mention an article a supplementary article that i have here and why uh, layoffs don't really work, especially, you know, and as we're on the precipice of a mass layoff spree and on tapping at the door of a recession, um, I think it's a fair time mm -hmm. to talk about kind of layoffs in general right now. And I wanted to cite an article um, written by Stanford where Professor... Uh, Jeffrey Pfeiffer of the Graduate Business School of Business at Stanford talks about layoffs and why they aren't don't really work in modern America. And he says, so many companies lay off employees because of copycat behavior. Um, in other words, a result of most mostly a result of social contagion, literally companies looking at one another and saying, if they're doing it, why aren't we doing it when it comes to um, some of these layoffs? Or sorry, when it comes to a lot of these layoffs, which is... I almost was in disbelief when I first read it. I'm like, no, no way that can be right. Like companies just doing it because other companies in their sector are, but um, from a lot of academic research gathered, that is in large part a big reason for it. You know, the board or the large shareholders ask, why aren't we doing it? And and then the dominoes fall in place. Mm -hmm. um, layoffs also increase the likelihood of suicide by two times or higher for affected employees. And the academic consensus is that layoffs do not improve company performance and don't do much for saving costs. I think that's a big one, um, especially, you know, regardless of your um, political orientation, you know, layoffs not doing much for saving costs. That's a pretty big, <laughs> like just from strictly a rounding a company point of view, mm -hmm. a management point of view, that's, that's, that's very significant, especially because of the cost of severance packages. And they also cut morale and productivity for workers still employed which you can extrapolate that to another loss, more loss in money if workers aren't being as productive due to lo lower morale. It's probably harder to quantify that directly, but that's mm -hmm. definitely a ripple effect. And quote, layoffs often do not cut costs as there are many instances of, of laid off employees being hired back as contractors with companies paying the contracting firm. Layers often do not increase stock prices in part because layoffs can signal that a company is having difficulty 
and layoffs do not increase productivity. Layoffs do not solve what is often the underlying problem, which is an ineffective strategy, a loss of market share, too little revenue, and layoffs are basically a bad decision. Companies sometimes lay off people because they just have, sorry, some companies sometimes lay off people they have just recruited, oftentimes with paid recruitment bonuses. When the company turns back in the next 12 to 14, 18 months after their mass layoffs, they will go back to the market and compete with the same companies to hire talent. They are basically buying labor at a high price and selling low, not the best decision. I feel like that's especially prevalent with the aggressive hiring sprees in tech over the past two years because of the mass increase in use of technology from people being in their homes due to COVID um, and for technological digital infrastructure. So it's, um, you know, I just overall don't think it's a super good move, um, especially if you're like a small business and you're the only one behind the reins and you literally, you literally cannot afford, right, to hire another employee because you, if you don't, if you, if you do, you won't be able to pay your mortgage. I understand that. If you're a massive corporation like an Amazon, Google, Microsoft, I think you can still take the brunt. You don't have to lay off people, rather. And the author of the Stanford article mentioned this. If you have to cut costs somewhere, maybe a temporary reduction. I saw a temporary reduction in pay of 5 to 10%. And then when the recession goes over, like they always do, pay that sorry, re, um, refill those wages and the most senior management takes a bigger cut than that during the time. Oh, they would never payments. though. I know. There's an a example of a welding manufacturing company I saw that did that. And I thought that was a fine strategy. If a company feels like they have to reduce costs somewhere and they just refuse to take lower profits, I would mm -hmm. still rather see a very a small reduction in wages than re reducing the workforce. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's me. Sorry for that long monologue. But, yeah. No, no, it's all good. You were totally right. Like, this is honestly like, because you have to imagine like minimum like around forty thousand people that are losing their job like this week and last. Like, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah, I saw and some people mentioning. Sorry for economy of scale. That oh, this thousands of many employees aren't that much in the company's grand scheme, but it's. On one hand, you you could try to make that argument, but on the other hand, those are still those are those are all these people's lives. Those are those are human those are beings. people's mortgages, kids that are um, kids they have to support, babies that are about to be born, livelihoods yep, that they have to support. This isn't just one person, right? Because right? most of these people aren't single, yeah. right. right? So it's like this is affecting probably two people, if not more, if you include like right. families and stuff, like and because insurance health insurance if you're a u.s employee is tied to employment mm -hmm. you know there are people who rely on their jobs insurance to get them through medications that they need to live to live or live their mm -hmm. life in, in a livable quality of life yeah um, that that's endangered when stuff like when the, the rugs pulled out from under them like this and it sucks yeah it super sucks. The thing is, is like this is unfortunately the reality of the tech industry where they just like hire a bunch of people and get rid of a bunch of people, and this continuously happens. Um, it's especially prevalent in the games industry with game cycles. Um, we've talked about this before, but like once you're no longer needed at the company, the game's done, you're out, kind of thing. So, um, I mean, this is definitely like a different beast than that, but it's still like a prevalent issue i don't know this is just really unfortunate and i hope that um i hope that everybody lands on their feet i um, because man this sucks Bummer. yeah for sure uh okay next one okay uh, this next story is, is there anything last... else you this Sorry. is the last bummer story is last what i was gonna story, say yeah yeah um, that's why I, I try and stack like some of the more controversial or intense stories at the beginning so then we can have like nice conversations about fun stuff later. Okay. Um, but yeah, next one is majority of game devs see harassment from players as a major problem survey claims. According to the 11th annual State of the Game report from Game Developer Conference, 91% of player harassment and toxicity towards developers is an issue. 42% say it is very serious. 
40% of the respondents that experienced harassment themselves, women, non-binary folk, and LGBTQ plus community were more likely to, to experience the harassment. Um, one respondent said, quote, I think setting boundaries clearly and publicly, as well as calling on the community itself to help, can be effective. Large companies seem to fear that their toxic players are their fan base without appreciating that they are impacting much larger numbers than their actual fan base, end quote. A community manager said, quote, we also need to stop inviting community to be part of the family. You're part of the conversation. You get to offer an opinion, but you don't get to demand everything goes your way, end quote. The report indicates the majority of game devs are straight white men, but diversity, uh, equity, and inclus inclusion efforts are increasing. Unionization support um, is amongst developers is at 53%. Um, most game devs are unsurprisingly not also not fund, fond of the blockchain. On the brighter side, more developers are working towards accessibility and sustainability efforts. Um, sorry, more developers are working on this than ever. This comes from Ed Nightingale um, at Eurogamer. And I want to say, like, like, the thing is, is, like, why do you, I understand money. I understand from financial standpoint, but from, like, the point of the developers, why do you want these people in your community? And I mean this, like, like so so nicely and so respectfully to the developers and so disrespectfully to these toxic people like i don't believe in like having like it's like yeah you get more revenue but like is it really worth it i don't know yeah it's... i don't know yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, yeah, it is. Especially since the people that are affected, I would be included in two of those categories. So. Right. So the chances of me experiencing harassment if I join the games industry is pretty high. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, yeah, it sucks, unfortunately. Um, yep. I think the best way to combat <sighs> it is increase awareness like this. And mm -hmm. sorry, that's the first step. The second step is, of course, implementing policy to prevent this and take, you know, direct disciplinary efforts where this exists. Yeah. If, if, yeah. If the the way this proliferates is by tolerating bigotry, if mm -hmm. you don't tolerate bigotry, you don't give people the opportunity to manifest yeah. itself in toxic cultures. So that's exactly how I feel. Like you're not welcome here. Like yeah, it's cut and dry. That's it. So it's, it's very, it's very simple because the thing is, is like the, I would much rather have the game devs have a safe space to make their games and live in this creative space, you know, and I don't know, like I would much rather them be safe than to allow toxic people to have a safe space to be toxic. Like go, go cry to your mom, dude. They, they, I don't want to listen the, to it. They have the outdoors. <laughs> you know, just gonna go in a forest and start talking to a tree. You don't know hurt what? The don't hurt the tree. Just you can. I don't know. Actually, Here's... don't even talk to the tree. Just start talking to the dead leaves because they're dead. They're Here's... not gonna. They're not gonna hurt mm -hmm. you. Here's my suggestion. Yeah. Set up an email. Set up a second email. Email from one email to the second email, complaining to yourself. It's perfect. Sooner or later, you'll be on a government watch list because you're bigoted. <laughs> uh, you're because you're a bigoted jerk. So that that might be funny. It's like, yeah. oh, I hated how this marginalized group is. Uh, what I think taking over or some some crazy white supremacist <laughs> rhetoric like that. And then the government will come in and barge your door down saying you're a threat to Homeland Security. So, but please do that. Please do that. Or, or go cry to your mom. Again, go cry to your mom. I'm not here to listen. <laughs> right. Or your blow up doll. I mean, right. most of these people, if not a lot of them, are probably incels. So yeah, go talk to your blow up doll, dude. I have no, I have no patience for these people. I used to be like a lot more like, well, like maybe we should try and be nice. And now I'm like, get out, <laughs> go nope. away. Nope. Bye-bye. <laughs> yep. Bye, Felicia. If you can't be nice, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> As Thumper says. Yeah. Now, I'm transitioning to some more fun news. Of course, the only person getting the PSVR 2 on this podcast isn't here today. Sam Haney. Anyway. Why Sam, did you say <laughs> Sam, please, please come back on the podcast. 
I need. Do you think need he's listening input. right now? I need your input. Sam, if you're listening, check your sock drawer. What if he doesn't have a sock drawer? Where else we put your socks? I don't have a sock drawer. I mean, I put my socks with my underwear. I don't have an underwear drawer either. Do you organize your clothes? I don't have any drawers. Where do you put your clothes? Oh, that's all a good up. question. Where do you put your clothes? <laughs> I hang the socks up individually with little with, clips. Like, pins with little clips, yeah. <laughs> No, I have like bins for them. Mm, are those in your closet or on a dresser or like? I don't have a dresser. That's what I'm telling you. I don't have any drawers. It's just in your closet and you have bins. Does yeah. that save space? Um. Yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah. I have really, really made the most out of my closet space. I'm actually quite proud of it. So yes. Mm. The thing is, is you get one of those like um, things that hang on the closet that are like drawers but they're not drawers right they're like little shelves that mm. are like a cloth hanger thing and so that's good for like sweaters and cardigans and stuff since you can't hang those as well as like pajama shirts pajama pants that kind of thing and then um i have like a little bin that sits in one of the like one of those little things that's like has my socks so i kind of like made like a makeshift drawer but it's not actually a drawer I can take it out of the closet if I need to, like, get through. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to get to socks at the bottom of the sock pile because they're, like, the fuzzy socks you need. You know, I wish I was wearing fuzzy socks mm -hmm. right now. My toes are so cold. Something tells me you only wear no-shows. That's not true, actually. I actually almost exclusively wear socks that are, like, like con just above Converse, like, height. Okay. Like, not like the short converse, like the high top converse. Like, I wear socks about that height. Um, I see. Nice. Yeah, anyway, and my new guys, tattoo makes it all cozy because he's, like, covered by the sock. Anyways. I, I bet Kevin doesn't <laughs> use laundry detergent when he washes his clothes. No, his if water. it does, it's probably, like, 30 cent large laundry detergent. What if it's... I don't know how this would work. Somehow he finds a washer and dryer all in one. He would. And then he would be like, Actually, it would somehow have some extra function as well. I wonder if that those, would be more those exist. That sounds more sustainable than two washers and dryers. It's it's not sustainable. It's like more. It saves space. It's for small spaces. Mm, I don't. I wouldn't want that though. Yeah, I wouldn't either. They, because the thing is, is like you can do that, but then it doesn't dry as well unless you get like the really expensive ones that are really really fancy, which nobody's doing that. Gotcha. Well, you know. After that fun excursion, let's talk about our PSVR 2 launch lineup <laughs> that neither of us will be experiencing because we don't have PSVR 2. So, there are currently more than 30 games tracked in the PSV2, PSVR 2 launch window, which goes through March. This includes, amongst others, Call of the Horizon Call of the Mountain, No Man's Sky, Resident Evil Village, and a free PSVR 2 update for Gran Turismo 7. And the president of Polyphony Digital, who's a studio who makes Gran Turismo 7, Kazunori Yamauchi, said, quote, we are thrilled that Gran Turismo 7 will be a PSVR 2 launch title. Through a free upgrade, for those who have already purchased Gran Turismo 7, players will experience all cars and tracks in VR like never before. GT7 of VR takes full advantage of the PSVR 2's next-gen features with eye tracking and foveated rendering. It's the first time I've seen that word before. Players will experience stunning visual fidelity while racing in any of the 450-plus cars in the game. While two-player split-screen races are not supported in VR, all other races, including online races, will be available. From the Nurburgring Ring to Tsukuba. Did I pronounce that right? Tsukuba? Tsukuba? Sorry, I was looking. At, yeah, Tsukuba. Yeah. Tsukuba. All right. Tracks will, can be experienced exactly as they are in real life. End quote. Foveation 13... is the state of being pitted. What? Foveated is the state of being pitted? Yeah, it's like image in digital processing. Interesting. Well, any CGI or, I don't know, visual fidelity developers, please tell us what the hell that is in practical terms. Thanks. The 13 titles for PSVR 2 revealed in this PlayStation blog post for the launch lineup include Before Your Eyes, which I've heard excellent things about. That's on Steam, and you need a webcam for it, and you will cry, and it's two hours long. Like, every time you blink, the game flashes forward in time, and it's puts you into an existential rut of 
when am I going to die and what do I do with my time left? And they start thinking about it on the daily, mitigating anxiety from thinking about it all day. And then, and then you don't play the game ever again, but you think about it every day. I haven't played the game and I've never thought about these things before. And I don't suffer from anxiety. Of course. Of course. That's a game there. Of course. There's kayak VR Mirage. I can't wait to kayak and VR and hit other people with my paddles. Uh, Oh, that would be great. I would love slapping somebody with I want to go whitewater <laughs> rafting and just like slap someone out of the boat with my paddle. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Pavlo VR, whatever the hell that is. Uh puzzling. If someone likes Pavlo VR knows what this is. Are you sure Sorry. it's not Pavlov? Wait. I no, I copied and paste. I thought it was Pavlo. Let me see. I don't know. I'm just asking. No, you're not. It's Pavlov. Okay. Shorts. Oh, that looks cool. It's a multiplayer shooter, actually. I take back what I said. Pavla VR looks cool. It's a multiplayer shooter with a heavy focus on community features. Realistic reloading features and fast-paced combat are part of the core experience. That actually looks cool. Pavlo, what am I saying? I'm sussy. <laughs> Puzzling Places, Song in the Smoke Rekindled, Synth Riders Remastered Edition, Thumper, NFL Pro Era, What the Bat, Res Infinite, Tetris Effect Connected, Creed Rise to Glory Championship Edition, and The Last Clockwinder are 13 more titles coming to PSVR 2 near launch. Man, Thumper makes me so sick. <laughs> I've Isn't played that Thumper where you're, like, before. On rails and you're like doing Play something. Music. music, yeah. It's like a it's like a rhythm game. Um, it's a fantastic game, but you have to be sitting down to play it. You cannot be standing up. You will fall over. But it is good. Maybe you'll fall over. I would. That's what I'm telling you. Maybe I wouldn't. Me and you you just have crazy same. balance. Oh, oh I, we're just not on the same level. Is that what you're, you're about to tell me you right now? You know the now? meme where Gus Fring is is putting is fixing his coat, and it's like you and me are not the same. Yeah, is that what you're telling me right now? You just have like god tier balance. It'll hold me in place with a cranial anchor. It'll go. Have you ever seen like? All right, side tangent. It's called like a certain type of traction where they put a thing on someone's head and then they start usually kids and they start spinning around and around and around and they're just being held up in the air by a thing that's on their head and it's supposed to help improve position of their spine, I believe, of their vertebrae in their spine. I think it's called like cervical traction. Is this medieval times? Like what is happening? I'm Googling it. Have you seen yep, that, I was that right. Little- have you seen that little tube yep. that they put babies in to take it's like called x-rays cervical and traction. Stuff? Wait, what do they put on babies? The little tube thing that they put babies in to take like the ultrasound and, or not ultrasound um like um x-rays and stuff like that. They put babies in a tube like you know it's <laughs> yeah. you ever driven through an ATM where you put the you put your check in the chute and then it goes up to the teller where you just put put a baby in the chute and then woo goes over to where yeah. it needs to go. X-ray. Yep. Yeah. Look it up, baby and tube x-ray. They're so cute. <laughs> I'm looking it up. <laughs> Babies have bones? No, they don't. Impossible. No, they don't. No, they don't. Anyway, um, I don't really have any stake in this list, but... I don't either. <laughs> um, if Half-Life Alex comes to PSVR 2, I'll probably get a PSVR 2. And I'm not joking. <sighs> probably I can't joking. believe it's not. We also know that um, Beat Saber is coming but not in the launch window, so. How was it not coming in the launch window? The game's I don't know. Like that was years. my question. When that was announced and we talked about it, I was like, how is this not coming out in the launch window? It already exists. Come on, Beat Saber. Beaties. I don't know if it's on Beat Saber or if it's on PlayStation. Beaties, Saberites. I should join a, a gaming club, like a local gaming club, just to ask around until I can borrow someone's VR and then leave the gaming club and just play Half-Life Alex and then return it and never talk to them again. Just wait for it to come out on PSVR 2 and then go to Sam's house. Whose house? Sam's. Sam. Yeah. Across yeah. continents. Yeah. <laughs> it's way easier than checking locally. All right, Sam, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> I'm going to play your PSVR 2 and we're going to have like beans and toast or whatever you eat over there. Oh my God. You have to meet Ted too. I'll be so Ted. jealous. I want to meet Ted. Oh, his, his, dog. His, his dog. Yeah, Ted. Yeah. That's awesome. You've met Ted via video. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Next one. Sackboy is moving to mobile. 
Um, a new free to play running game, Ultimate Sackboy, based on Little Big Planet, is coming to mobile on February 21st. It's available for pre registration on the Google Play Store. Um, Ultimate Sackboy is a 3D runner similar to mobile games like Temple Run or Sonic Dash. The game description for Ultimate Sackboy reads Battle familiar enemies, swing through crazy obstacles, hop, skip, jump, and weave their way to the top of the Ultimate Games. This game is not to be confused with Run Sackboy Run, which is a side scrolling endless runner currently available on Android and iOS. This comes from Chris Scullion at VGC. Yeah, I love Temple we needed Run back one in the that's day. Th- we needed one that's like this way and this way. You know what I mean? For audio listeners, Bree's saying we needed like a vertical runner and a horizontal side scroller. Yeah, so we need side scroller as well as like the regular 3D runner. Because why not? I love Temple Run and Subway Surfer. Never played them. Oh. The Did only one jump? I played was um like the Laura Croft Go. Like, oh. Where it's like kind of like that, but different. Slightly. Did you at least play Doodle Jump in, in the era of mm-hmm. iPod games? Mm-mm. Angry Birds? I did play Angry Birds. Because everyone played that. Yeah. Tiny Wings? Nope. Oh, that was a classic. Uh, did you play Pocket God? I have. I Fruit love Ninja? that game so much. I love, yeah, Fruit Ninja. So I was actually thinking about this earlier, but like, uh, wait, is it Pocket God? Yeah, Pocket God, where you can like, you can take like the, you have the little people that you're like rolling over, the little, you're like their god or whatever. You can pick up like fish and slap them with it. I was thinking about that earlier when we were talking about slapping people with kayaks. Nice. Um, nice. Cut the rope. That's a good one. Infin- good one. Of course, we talked about it before. Infinity Blade. Is, uh, Infinity is, Blade is miles above the rest of these. Is totally at totally the the leader of any mobile game list you could imagine it mm-hmm. was literally a triple a game on your ipod touch mm-hmm. and it's been at least in that era it's like way above there's now like games that i would argue that are probably better um but at that time it was way above the others yeah it was sick yeah i will not awesome. be playing this Sack I, might, game. I might download it while i move into my new apartment and i don't have anything besides like a bed and a couch while i'm setting up things it's like what do i play actually no that's a lie it'll be playing my switch probably mm. yeah yep yep i have to decide whether i'm bringing my switch to japan or not mm, i would well well see <laughs> it's not as simple i don't know I'll anyway returnal launches on pc on february 15th that was pretty fast. So not many details have been released on any specific features that will add to the experience, but so far, NVIDIA DLSS and AMD FSR have been added to the game, allowing you to dial up your frame rate without comp- compromising resolution. NVIDIA NIS has also been added. Do you know what NIS is? Mm-mm. I'm looking it up. Oh, it's NVIDIA Image Scaling. So it helps boost FPS at lower resolutions, I believe. Mm, okay. Wait, but then the DLSS, yeah, okay, DLSS is for making your resolution look better at, it's for increased, per, I guess I'm confused what, how NIS and DLSSS, and DLSS do different it's, things. If you but, keep reading the sentence, you'll answer your question. No. Okay, nope. then don't, that's fine. Yeah, yep. Oh, yeah. Guys, this is what you should read. And yeah, IS has also been added for players who want to see an increase in performance, but don't have the hardware to support DLL, DLSS, or FSR. So yeah, for people who don't know, DLSS um, on the NVIDIA side is only, I'm speaking from personal experience here, only supported on 20 series NVIDIA graphics cards or higher. So players who have 10 series or 9 series or anything below that do not have access to DLSS. Um and FSR is for AMD graphics cards. I believe that's, I believe they're older graphics cards like the RX, the 480 and the 560 and things like that do have FSR support. But if you have an older card, it inevitably doesn't. It should hopefully help. Mm-hmm. I wonder if NIS works for AMD hardware as well. I'm but not either sure. Either way, Returnal also supports. Ray Trace Shadows is before it, but now the devs at Climax Studios have added the support for ray tracing reflections as well. 
This will make the contrast of a dark setting and neon bullets pop out even more than before. There are two new wide resolution formats, ultra wide at 21 by nine and super ultra wide at 32 by nine. Further details on the specs are available on the, play, on the PlayStation blog, and you can enjoy the award-winning audio and music through Dolby Atmos, two 3D audio solutions, or f- um, 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound. Custom ray-traced audio is also available. Now, advise that the game is best experienced on a DualSense controller to experience full haptics and adaptive triggers. So yeah, if you haven't played Returnal or you're a mega fan, you want to play it on PC, get it out on Steam and... PlayStation just keeps coming out with their great PC ports. I don't expect this one to be any different. I am really tempted to pick this one up, to be honest with you, because the game looks fantastic on my TV, but like on my 2K monitor, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it would be extra special. So I'm thinking about it. Nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ready to talk about else? Hogwarts? I am so, I'm always ready to talk about Hogwarts Legacy. Um, Hogwarts Legacy is already the number one selling game on Steam and PlayStation 5, number two on Xbox. So we're just about three weeks away from Hogwarts Legacy's release and pre-sales have been absolutely unbelievable and showed no sign of slowing down. The game has retained its top spot at the as the best selling game on Steam. CSGO is higher in revenue, but it's free to play title with microtransactions. Um, Legacy is outselling the next closest actual paid game, Modern Warfare 2, but by a good margin according to the chart. Hogwarts Legacy is listed on Amazon as the top-selling game on PlayStation 5 right now, ahead of Dead Space 2 Remake, and number two on Xbox Series X slash S, behind only Modern Warfare 2. Um, and this was my question. If the game lives up to the hype, how how many sales are we going to see here? Because if it's already top-seller, we're going to see a lot of sales. Anyways, this comes from Paul Tassi at Forbes. Not our Under... usual poll. Sorry, what? I said not our usual pull pulling from Forbes. So wanted to shout I'm also out. not a big fan of Paul Tassie's journalism. Sorry, Paul. But this story is fun, I guess. He does a lot of Destiny content in the past. Anyway, now that I've perhaps alienated one columnist and a variety of people who like <laughs> Paul's articles, let me speak further on what I think Hogwarts Legacy will do for sales. I think it gets under... 8 million copies sold. I have no numbers in my brain. I have no idea. Yeah, I knew it. I win. Um, so you- I think it's going to sell really well. And also, um, we have a vested interest in this doing well. Um, so hopefully it reviews well. We should drop it. <laughs> no! Please! I don't want to. What are you going to do? Use your little stick and do a little sussy spell and... I don't know. Yes. Yeah, that's what you're going to do? Yes, that is what I'm going to do. I mean, at least we don't have Forspoken. You know what I mean? Harry Potter, but GTA levels of autonomy. That I mean, that's kind of what this game is supposed to be. I could just go around and like... You go to classes and do spells. Can I just throw a chair at my professor? I think so. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, all right. I want to turn the professor into an inanimate object. I want to turn the professor into a know. teacup. I do know you can do the killing curse, according to what I've heard so far. What is the killing curse? I don't read Harry Potter. The curse where you kill people. It's How a spell it a curse, that though? kills people. Like, it's a spell a curse. that kills people. Yeah, it's because ah, that's what it's called. I don't know, dude. I'm not like, I'm not the terminology. Like, <laughs> oh, so you just say, ah, killing curse, and the person it's dies? The, no, I mean, you say the spell, but yes. Sassanade killed Dumbledore? Yes, that is what happened. Yeah, I just spoiled that, guys. Whoops. Um, yeah. It's okay. Anyways, what I was saying is at least we don't have Forspoken. All right. Tom and Amon, you guys are idiots. I can't believe they picked that up at the last and second. you countered a Tom a The other thing... Okay, the other thing that they countered, which, like, I didn't put in here, but there's a bunch of news about Armored Core 6. That's the other thing that they countered was Armored Core 6. And Kevin and Ethan took that, or we did? Uh, no, no, they countered. Oh wait, no, yeah. So, um, they uh, X Talk took Armored Corset, and they countered it. And frame by frame slash I hate my friends team countered it. I'm a little scared of the Elden Ring DLC doesn't release this year, and we picked that game up. 
Oh, yeah. For people that don't know and want updates, we picked up the first major um, Elden Ring DLC, um, as well as Forza Horizon 5 DLC 2. Yes. For $2. Which I was very upset about, but... $2, that's an absolute steal to pick up. I mean... We won't get into this again. When If you guys are wondering what we were arguing about on the podcast, it was this game. It was the DLC number two pack. I was like, this is such a boring pick, Taylor. <laughs> I want to win. I want to get my I want pack. to have fun. Nope. Winning so, and yeah, fun so, are mutually exclusive. So yeah, so we are very hopeful that the Elden Ring DLC will come out this year. And I actually would say like, I expect it to because we're already at like the time at which like the other DLCs have come out at the latest. So I'm hopeful by end of year that we'll see some Elden Ring DLC. We know for sure the DLC is coming because they have like officially said that there there will be more. And they always do DLC. But it's just a question of when it comes. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the end of our new segment for this week. So now we're going to move on to the podcast mini- within a podcast. We're going to move on to our mini review of <laughs> The Last of Us episode pops number one. Yep. And I thought it was actually, no, Brie, you go first. I thought it was terrible. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I really enjoyed this first episode. There are a lot of changes that I was a little bit confused about, as well as some changes that I thought was like a good decision. Um, but I'm for the things that I was like, I'm not so sure about this change. Um, I think that um, I'm willing to suspend disbelief long enough to let them show me what they want to do with the show. So, yeah, I thought it was good. So far, I would say the show, for me, currently, is probably about a 9 out of 10. Nice. I don't think I'm quite as high on it as you are. I thought it was good. I don't think it's excellent. Um, I've also experienced... It's hard for me to rate it without a certain bias because I've played the game. And... I know this. I know the story they're telling already. There's a novelty in the narrative that I just won't experience. I'm not sure if that takes away from the from how I view it. Um, I really enjoy the casting decision for Pedro Pascal as Joel. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The, the actress who plays Ellie, coming from the game, I'm gonna be honest, is a bit jarring. They're seeing their their facial differences. I'll need to get used to it. Um, to be honest, before I thought far and away like when last of us first came out um like the most notable casting like the person to best match ellie's face that i would have picked would have been elliot page before they transitioned but obviously number one i ellen mean that page, ellen ellen hence, page is no more hence yeah so. well i was gonna say hence the like the whole lawsuit against naughty dog oh wait did ellie did i just forget about this did ellie page sue naughty dog yeah. For the for her likeness. Yes. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's yeah. That was never happening. But that was like the most similar. What about who was the? I wonder who the. Sometimes the motion capture actors and actresses can reprise their roles in a live action setting, but I don't think this was the yeah. case that for Ellie. <sighs> um, but yeah, with obviously with. With him out of the picture, with Elliot Page, before they transitioned out of the picture, you know, I don't think there would have been a, a quote unquote perfect visual cast for Ellie. Um, mm-hmm. I'll just have to get. Sorry, is Ellie's actress's name Bella Ramsey? Is that correct? Is that else? sounds right. Yeah, I never saw Game of Thrones, so I haven't seen her acting profile as a child. Um, it's but Bella Ramsey, her man, like her mannerisms as Ellie were very on point. I liked her performance as Ellie. It's just her appearance. I'll have to get used to. Um, I really enjoyed the acting by the Mrs. Adler, the grandma. I'm not going to spoil her territory, but whoever plays that, that was a chilling performance. My mom was so upset about it. She was like, that was the worst. I can't believe this. <laughs> I was like, right. okay. <laughs> I thought Sarah's, Sarah's was excellent. Uh, it wasn't. Okay. 
it was fantastic, but it didn't have that same like. No, it didn't because like, you weren't voice playing as quality. No, no, uh, no. Quality. It's the it's the voice acting. If you go listen to like I don't want to spoil what happens, but like if you go listen to Sarah's voice actress in that moment, it's like she almost is like doing this weird like scream cry and like whimpering, and it like it really like pulls at me so hard. Um, and so it didn't have that same like tonal quality in terms of like the voice. Um, but the person that played Sarah still did a fantastic job that I'm not complaining about. Like, it's just the other one connected with me more. So. Interesting. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Again, I cannot recommend that podcast enough because there's a lot of good details where they like talk about like why they made some changes and stuff like that. Um, so one of the things that um, this isn't like, I mean, it's mild spoilers, but it's like the very first part of the show. So I don't think it really counts. But there's in the video game, there's when you're walking around the street as Joel, you see like these people lined up and then they get scanned. And if like there's one person that like has you know, the, the, um, infection, is that what it's called? Is it infection or virus? I think it's infection. Infection, um, I think. And then they like get shot and well, that's like how you experience. It's, yeah. yeah. It's not a virus. It's a fungus. Yeah. So it'd be an infection. Yeah. Right. Anyway. So, yeah. So the person gets shot and that's kind of like the tone that sets, like, if you're in, like, if you're infected, like you get shot, you're done kind of thing right. versus like in the TV show, they did it by kind of like this, like kid wandering up and like getting tested. And they kind of showed it in like a different way. Um, and they kind of talked about the reasonings behind that in the podcast and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I would say my biggest concern right now is what they're doing with Tommy's character. Um, oh, good point. And, like, the motivations behind Joel. Um, because I don't think that those motivations needed changing to be understandable in a TV show. So I'm confused as to why they're changing, like, those motivations for why he's going um, that direction. So, slightly confused about that. But, again, willing to suspend his belief so that way we can kind of figure out what's going on. We'll see. Oh, also, did you know that the person that plays... Um, Marlene is the original voice actress. I had a feeling that was the case. I didn't she, know this. She looked Sam really spot on. Me. I'm like, I think that probably is the motion cap actress. And now I've been, I've been obnoxious. I told Sam, I was like, I'm going to be so obnoxious until everybody I know now that, because that is so cool. That is so, so cool. So yeah, it's the original voice actress from the video game. She's playing Marlene again. As the. Yeah. Whatever. I also liked very minor a spoiler in the game and in the show. Um, when uh, um, Ellie asked Joel, you know, how he gets his money, or maybe no, he asked her, I think, how she got the money for, for a gift. She's like, drugs, I sell hardcore drugs. Oh, Sarah, in, you mean, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, it wasn't Ellie, it was Sarah, my bad. Yeah. And, and, and then in the show, later in episode one, Joe is moving hardcore drugs to get money. <laughs> Yeah, so that was that was that was a funny that was a funny full circle moment that I thought was clever. Yeah, it is. I mean, he doesn't he sell drugs in the game too? I don't. But think, it's not explicitly stated. I don't think he, it was like, anywhere as overt as it is in the show. Yeah, like it no, was obvious in the show was it's doing, like very obvious. But he was doing things behind Fetch's back to get extra money in the game. But in the show, he's very, very obviously moving some kind of either narcotic or um, controlled substance. Mm. So where it's so, like Narcos, The Last of Us. Pedro Pascal did play an agent in Narcos, so you might be right. You might be right. Man have you seen that he did like an interview recently where somebody was like, have you seen that you're the daddy of the internet? <laughs> oh, God. He's not. Oh, I don't think <laughs> he's, he's that. Like, he's like, he's like, all right. <laughs> and he was like, so he was, he was there for it. He was like, all right, I'll be the daddy of the internet. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, too. I don't think Pedro Pascal is like. The drop dead gorgeous guy is like you might categorize. Oh, he's handsome. So many higher Hollywood actresses. I think he's handsome, but he's a more grounded like. He just looks like a more grounded dude. From like he doesn't have the absolute perfect pristine looks that yes. so many of the other male stars do. Which mm -hmm. you know, as a common person in America and seeing so many you know stars and movies and stuff, it's nice to see someone who looks a little more like like me or you. 
Taylor, you were supposed to say that you are above average person. You were supposed to use that line to be confident, not to be like, I'm just, I'm just a dude. You're supposed to be you, like, talking... as an above average person. No. I was talking to Miri. I wasn't referring to Brie. I was referring to the audience collectively. Oh, so. okay. So our audience collectively is average. I'm making that assumption. I think that's a reasonable okay. one to make. I will make the assumption that our audience is not average. They're well above average. Sorry. Average in – if you were to take the number of people who listen to this pod – if you were – number of hours to listen to this podcast total and divide it by the number of people, I think you would come to the conclusion that our audience is average because of average watch time or listening time. What is happening right now? <laughs> That's how I interpret this, Brie. If I just called you average in the audience, please don't stop listening or subscribing to our Patreon. I really didn't mean it. I really didn't mean it. I really didn't mean it. I'll give you. I'll See, give that's you, what I'm I'll saying is I'm saying they're hot and you're saying they're not. So. They're averagely hot. Oh, okay. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Sure. You know, sure. You know what? Sure. Anyone I'll go could with be that. hot if they were a fedora. That's only true for Troy, Troy Baker. Troy Baker wears a fedora? Sometimes, and he looks damn good in a fedora. He has good hair. Come on. He looks really good in a fedora. Oh, my God. What's next? He looks really good with an NFT, too. Uh, Probably. Hey, Troy Baker is a beautiful man, you have to say. He is. He is. He's a very adorable kid, too. Have you seen his son? He's so cute. No. Children aren't real. Go on his Instagram. You know no. what? Birds aren't real. I will. We'll. I'll continue on this until it like this. I will die on this hill. Birds aren't real. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. All right. You know. On that note, I think it's about time we wrap this up. So, thank you guys so much for listening to episode 28, my highly above average listeners and viewers. And highly above average. Remember, you can find us on YouTube.com/slash Save the Game Media, and don't forget to check out our Discord. If you want to hang out, mm -hmm. links are in the description. Mm -hmm. And Brie, where can people find you? You can find me at Fabulist, F-A-B-U-L-A-S-T, Brianna, B-R-E-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Nice. Anywhere, pretty much. Again, except for MySpace. And I want to say it now because I feel regretful. I did not mean to dead name Elliot Page. I think I mentioned his name before his transition, which I probably shouldn't have, but... If I did it, okay, offended, because you were you were offended. trying to give context yeah. as to why you were casting right. that, that way. So LGBT I think it's okay. Plus viewers, I did not mean any offense by it, and if it offended you, please let me know, and I'll work to fix that in the future. I'm an ally. Good shout out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, ally. <laughs> I'm an ally. Yeah. You see that TikTok where he's like, no. he's like, this is my friend. He's an ally. And then it turns over to the friend, and he's like, ally. <laughs> That's why I'm going TikTok, guys. Uh, right, you can find funny. Me. Thanks for plugging your info, Brie. You can find me on the Discord and not on Twitter. Yay. Actually, you can find me on... I'm shocked Twitter isn't dead yet. Mastodon at Toilet Paper 32 or something. Don't know. I'm not on Mastodon. I just made that username up. I'm not there. If someone does have that name on Mastodon, that'll be really weird. But... Until next time, guys, thanks for listening. This has been perhaps the weirdest episode of No Limits, episode 28. Until next time, <laughs> have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>